what's up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the very first episode the very first episode of the rap citizen podcast that's right rap citizen podcast this is numero uno the premiere and basically the whole thing behind this is it's just a podcast if you guys are watching me on my off tap life channel you know i've got the queen show podcast i've got the bop down podcast and basically they're just me going through you know we do so many different reactions and stuff all over the place there's so much information and so much dialogue and so much conversation and stuff that happens in the comments i basically take that and help use that to fuel the whole episode and you know we usually have like a particular topic which is the song of choice of that particular episode for example this one here we're going with the Tom McDonald fake woke one because we just did that and we had a great response from you guys a lot of different things that happened during the comment section there I was reading I was like okay yeah that's dope I like that so I was like you know what we might as well go ahead and launch on this channel because I've been when I've been wanting to do it for a minute I've been wanting to start a new podcast for this channel here and I hadn't done it yet a, a new one if you guys are old school in the channel you do know i used to have the faith chase the um show that used to be earlier back in the beginning of this channel and i, I think i had i did have a couple other podcasts on here as well early days um but you know i wanted to get a proper one that we could freaking really just you know do what we do with and uh i'm super excited about it that's what we're gonna do right now get ready this is the first one so look out for it i'm gonna try to keep it in a very regular routine i want to keep it on the regular where you know once a week we drop a new episode of this and we have a lot of stuff to work with already we've already done tons of different amazing songs on this channel so there's already tons of conversation to start with and also just adding to that you know if you're a citizen of rap if you love rap if you love what you know the 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 whole rap culture uh there'll be different topics surrounding all of that kind of stuff as well so just this is the place for you if you're a citizen of rap welcome to the podcast i'm happy to have you all right so of all that being said now i've got it teed up here uh tom mcdonald fake woke we just did this and you know i, I was happy you know we had a pretty good amount of uh views um, and and likes and, and comments considering for this one you know it hasn't been up that long it's really only been about 24 hours since it first premiered and i think we're off to a good start with that and i thought i'd dive in right now though because i saw some comments in there i was like you know what yeah look this is definitely good stuff to start talking about uh this song for itself if you guys haven't watched make sure you check out my reaction video to this song and uh you will get a initial gist of how I felt, you know, when I watched the video and what the song type of feelings and evoked in me. Uh, I love the song. And you guys know, anyone who is on this channel knows how much I love Tom Mickey D. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tom is as real as it gets and really grounded in his in his storytelling and his truths and his, uh, you know, he's as, very authentic and he speaks what he feels or someone pointed out in the comments was very good we'll get to that in a second but not necessarily what he feels but just also observations and stuff which i like that i saw that comment i was like "Ooh, that's good yeah very good stuff so we're going to go through that and and let's just start talking about this because you know i think it's very important in this day and time right now that you know we you guys have heard me say this a million times i think it's important that we start taking time to really listen to what other people have to say, to put ourselves in other people's shoes, to get their perspective, to really just take a moment, one moment, just to really, uh, you know, be open, be open, not so closed, not so stuck in our own ways, but really be open. I think communication is a key and we can open that communication door and have that dialogue and just the respect that comes along with that. Because you got to not only listen, you got to respect what other people are also saying, their feelings, their thoughts, you know, you have to be open to it. You can't just say, oh, listen, but it doesn't matter what you're going to say. I'm still going to afterwards do and feel how I feel and not care what you have to say. Like, it's about coming together. And, you know, I think that's really vital. If you do all things through love, if you do them grounded in love, you will get a better result each and every time, no matter what it is. If you allow love to lead the way, you'll be surprised where you end up. You know what I'm saying? So that's really important. It's really vital. 
And so basically what I want to do is start right here because <laughs> this comment right here, I saw this and I went, yo, this is good stuff. Chad Hughes, Chad Hughes. And by the way, this podcast will be available on your favorite uh, place to download podcasts, wherever that is for you, wherever you get your podcasts, whether that's iTunes or Spotify or whatever, this will be available, all those places for you to listen to in your car when you're going for a drive or whatever. This also will be available, uh, obviously, here on YouTube. I like to film it, and so you'll be able to watch the podcast and film it, which you can still technically listen to when you're driving. Just don't look at the screen when you're doing it. <laughs> but uh, let's start with this one here. Chad Hughes wrote this. Great reaction. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate that. Chad wrote, fake woke is an act of vulnerability. Woo. An act of vulnerability. Starting conversations. You guys heard me say that. Starting conversations. Disagreement. Amen. Disagreement. Debate. Amen. Debate. And consensus. Think of this. No swear words. My kids can hang with facts that don't care about your feelings. Oh. I love that comment. And I actually even wrote it in the comments. I wrote, hey, thanks for the compliment and your insight. Much love to you. I, I just love that comment because it's exactly what I felt and, and how I felt. I really felt that was a really strong comment. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, you, you need to have the conversations, you know. You're never going to have conversations if people are also afraid to start said conversations, you know, so by Tom putting himself out there, it's a very vulnerable place to be. It really is. It's very just like, wow, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to put, put it all out there and, you know, let's hope it, it gets a good, you know, result from doing so. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you don't know it could go either way. And a lot of times I know Tom has met a lot of negativity from certain people uh, just because he did put it out there and was vulnerable. It was like, you know, I'm just going to speak. I'm going to speak on it. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to freaking, this is what I've, I've experienced. This is what I think. This is what I've observed. This is what my thought process is around this. This is what I think other people's, the dialogue is happening out there. This is what people are saying, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there and blast. I'm going to voice it. I'm going to bring it, you know, to the surface so people can actually, hopefully, start talking or get invoke conversation, you know, thought provocative stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I love that. And this comment just covers all of that. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's expected. Not everyone's always going to agree on any topic. Everyone's different. Not, we're not expecting everyone to agree with everything, but we do expect everyone to listen and to, to be respectful and, and put ourselves in other people's shoes so we can, potentially have an understanding you know what i mean so that it, it's 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 a way to really get rid of division by doing so and i i just love that i love that that people are out here wanting to to do that to be woke as the popular phrase is you know and to be out there and saying hey look man I'm, I'm not going to be another sheep in the herd. I'm going to be out there and making sure that my word get heard. You heard? <laughs> high five. We high fiving? No, me, just me? I high five myself. I don't care. I ain't afraid to high five myself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, okay, let's continue. And uh, let's talk about this a bit more. Um, debate. There's another thing he said in his comment, debate, debate. So another part of it, let's, let's debate on it. You, you know, a debate, a really well-run debate is great because you really get to see both sides objectively. You know, you get to really, really, if you're open to it, you can really see, oh, okay. I didn't actually think of it that way. I didn't, right, okay. Now that you've actually broken it down for me, I, I totally understand your, your, your perspective on that. I see why you see things the way you do. Debates are great for that. You know, when, when it's properly run, when it's properly, properly done, a debate will really do just that. 
you know, cause people to, hmm, wait a minute. Okay. Ah, yeah, that's, yeah, right. Okay, I get it now, you know. So that's important. I love that. You know, it's it's really cool. I think this other thing that he said here as well that is really cool, and I think we all can appreciate that, is just you don't have to use profanity in a song to get your point across. You don't have to say a million curse words to get the point across. And I love that. I love when people are able to get said message across effectively and just as equally as strong with meaning and, and, and that extra bit of oomph that you want sometimes, because a lot of times you use the profanity to really let people know how strongly you feel about something. But there's ways to do that without having to, to use those words. And I like how he said that, you know, hey, look, my kids can listen to this. My kids can, uh, you know, absolutely uh, get the facts of what's going on without they're having it be mixed in with, you know, a bunch of words that you don't particularly want your kids to hear, you know. I mean, a lot of times you don't even want other people to just say it around you, you know. A lot of times certain words can make anybody feel uncomfortable. And some songs are riddled with so much profanity that you're like, oh my gosh, this would have been good, but uh, it's just every other word is just like, you know, <laughs> Uh, a profanity and look, I'm not hating on anyone that uses profanity to each their own you know at the end of the day you know it's a form of expression I think some people do tend to also take words a little too freaking serious you never know, heard that saying when you was growing up sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me I used to love that saying because I was called all kinds of things growing up <laughs> I remember that saying it was like okay just remember they're just words <laughs> Okay, let's get on with our day now. <laughs> it's hard to do. Some of those words hurt. <laughs> they really do. But it's good that, you know, there are artists out there who, you know, do their best to not utilize those words if they don't have to. Now, admittedly, myself, for some reason, now I don't write profanity into my music. Uh, that's not something I've ever felt the need I needed to do. But that being said, when I freestyle, like if I'm doing a freestyle sesh and I'm like just, you know, dropping some lyrics for some reason, I don't know why, but every once in a while I will drop in some profanity. I'm like, where'd that come from? I don't even use profanity in my normal day to day speaking. Like it's not how I speak. I do not speak using profanity every day. But some reason when I'm rapping and I guess it's just the heat of the moment and the aggression and you're really like, oh, yeah, and especially if you're in a battle kind of situation, you start saying so you're like, holy crap, I, I did not. Why did I say that? I, where did it even come from? I've never used that word. <laughs> But I don't know, it's like, if, for you guys who, who've never um, freestyled, uh, when you're freestyling, you've got to be quick. Like, I'm talking about the people who are truly freestyling. I'm not talking about the people who are freestyling a pre-written freaking, you know, a whole bunch of, of written stuff that they've pieced together that they wrote freaking throughout 2000 and freaking 19. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about freestyling your written bro like i'm sorry to me that ain't freestyling and th there seems to be two different schools of thought on this which surprises me but i think people who grew up like like i'm talking about their entire life from day one in rap and in, and 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 also this is part of their life on a deeper level people who um who I, I would like to say more appreciative, even like old school rap, you know, like if you've done your history, you understand the roots of rap and music. And I, I don't know, like, I just feel that if you really are about it, you will get it and you will think the way I do in this particular topic, just as far as rap, a freestyle, okay, a rap freestyle, talking about freestyle, when you're rapping off the top of the dome, to me, means you're 100% rapping off the top of the dome it doesn't mean that you're coming like off the top of the dome with stuff that you are trying to remember that you wrote freaking in different pieces of your different songs over the course of your lifetime like to me i'm sorry but i the way i grew up the way that i was taught the way that all my homies and everybody else around me like rap okay when you talk about a freestyle when you talk about dropping lyrics off the top of the dome 
it is not something you pre-wrote. Otherwise, you're just reciting something you, you're not freestyling. You, I mean, I guess I can see the argument because, I mean, technically you are kind of freestyling if it's just mix and match stuff. If it's no planned, like if you're not reciting your song from, you know, start to finish as it was written and you just piece and matching. I guess in a sense, you could say that's kind of a freestyle, kind of, because you're just randomly picking bits and pieces out the air and throwing them down. But to me, 100% freestyle that I'm talking about is when it ain't nothing you've ever written before. You're just in the moment, in the heat of the moment, coming up with stuff. And I used to play a game where you could tell I was freestyling because I'd say, okay, you tell me what I need to rhyme next. So they're dropping words. They're dropping, the, the, the literally dropping the words, like, you know, blue, you know, Copenhagen. <laughs> you know like just they coming up with stuff they be trying to come up with words to try to stuff you up too freaking yeah i know what you're doing <laughs> you can't rhyme i bet you can't rhyme saxophone <laughs> I, I can rhyme saxophone by the way personally <laughs> saxophone pick up the tone you know dog want a bone i don't know you could pick you could you could figure it out anyways uh <laughs> I wasn't even trying to, uh, but you get what I'm saying. At the end of the day, um, a freestyle is to me that. So that, that's just my thought process. That's just my thought process. Anyways, um, I'm going to stop and start this over in a second because my camera has a 29.59 limit for you guys that know, you know. Uh, we're going to have to stop this and we'll get back with a fresh 29.59. I'll see you in a sec. All right, we're back, we're back, we're back. So I just uh, I just need to find a camera that can record uninterruptedly. That's what I'm really looking forward to having one day where there's no freaking 29.59 time limit. Canon, jeez, Canon. Even their new cameras that just drop have time limits, like Canon. Sony don't have it. Why you gotta be freaking having the time limit thing, man? Let me record till the battery dies and then I have options because I can then put a dummy battery in and I could just freaking record forever until my memory card fills up. Like, come on. There's even ways around that because then I could freaking put the ninja on the thing and I can record straight to that and it'll never end. Anyways, <laughs> one day, someday. Uh, Fake Woke, man. What a title, too. I want to talk about just the title of the song, Fake Woke. Like, talking about song titles, man, like, you just see that and you're like, oh, I already know that's going to be freaking just something dope. It's going to cut. Fake Woke. Was it? You listen to the title, you already kind of get a, a, a gist of what it's about, don't you? You know what I mean? It's one of those type of very descriptive titles. Fake Woke. There's a lot of people out here fake woke. <laughs> Ain't it, though? You know what I mean? Or they're using the whole woke thing as an excuse. You know, both sides of the coin, being woke or not woke. <laughs> People like that. Man, I wasn't even woke up. I haven't woke up yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> when you're half asleep, uh, yeah, this is the excuse, man. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Don't be fake about it either. <laughs> Let's continue through these, man. I want to read another one. Thanks again, Chad. I loved your comment. That was one of my favorites. Um, another comment I really loved. And um, this one was a really good one as well. I really, really like this one. Kevin um, Karbenik. Kevin Karbenik wrote, None of it is necessary, Tom's feelings slash opinions. It's just observations and blunt truths. Oh. I, I freaking read that and I went, yo, man, that's 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 right on the money. That is right on the money. Um, because, yeah, you know, we tend to when we listen to an artist, we all do this. You know, we'll listen to a song and we instantly automatically assume that that's probably their point of view or their thought process or what they think themselves when they may only be realistically, man, I got another eyelash in my eye. Um, they may be only bringing just their own personal observations on a 
certain topic or whatever, um, bringing it out to the open so that others, you know, bring an awareness to it and stuff like that, which, you know, I love this comment because that's very true. You know, Tom doesn't necessarily say at any given time, you know, in any of his music, you know, necessarily that everything that you hear in this song is my thoughts, my belief and what I feel, you know, it could be, this is something I've experienced, I've observed, I've seen this firsthand. It doesn't necessarily have to be all about him. I love that comment. Bravo. That was a really a comment because I think in life too, you know, like at the end of the day, like we all have uh, feelings and opinions about stuff. A lot of people are afraid to talk about. A lot of people are afraid of the truth. And that's something that I, I, I wonder, you know, like when did we get to that point where we're we're so or have we always been at that point you know but why 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 is the truth the hardest thing for people to to really accept because the truth some may say famous saying the truth will set you free <laughs> you know what i'm saying we hold on to this whole fear factor a lot of times we've already decided the outcome of said situation before it's even come to be. That's, again, fear, doing what fear does best. I've done a lot of topics, a lot of talks and seminars and workshops I've put on for that topic. Uh, for you guys who don't know, speaking of which, because you're like, what are you talking about? You put on seminars, workshops. Outside of my music and all that stuff, which again, if you're new here, you don't know, I've got a background in music. I used to be signed to Sony. I sing, rap, produce, do all that kind of stuff, songwrite, etc. cetera. Um, I love entertainment also as well. I love acting. I love filmmaking, all that stuff. I love cars, in case you didn't know and you're here. I love orange juice. Who doesn't like a good glass of orange juice? <laughs> um, but outside of all of that stuff, I'm also a certified hypnotherapist, personal development coach, and holistic practitioner. So, uh, you know, I put on seminars and workshops from time to time. Haven't done any lately. I don't know when the next one I'll be doing. Might do something virtually. I think that's the way moving forward at the moment of this pandemic. Um, but I, I, I have had tons of like even just one-on-one -on -one clients and stuff that I've dealt with, you know, virtually and stuff. Um, video calls and stuff. But um, that's, I'm telling you that so you understand why when I'm speaking sometimes and I say, you know, things like I just said. Uh, it's just based on my own uh, professional opinion and experience and things that I've learned. As I like saying this, I like explaining this because I want people to understand, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, as a teacher, as someone who's a practitioner, someone basically in that teaching role, so to speak, to me, that doesn't make me a know-it-all or make me oh, look at me, I'm the teacher or something. No, that makes me the biggest student. I always say this and I believe this. I'm just a student of it all. I'm someone who has decided to commit to doing the work on myself. And so I'm going on the journey. And as such, I've decided to share my journey with all of you. So hopefully in doing so, it allows me to assist someone else on their journey and to help them avoid some potential pitfalls or help them have a smoother, you know, drive down the road to where they want to get to, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just an open window. I've decided to share that experience with others. Uh, so I'm, I'm just a student of the game. You know, I'm just a big student. Yeah, you know, that's to me, that's what the teacher is. The teacher is the biggest student because they're constantly doing the work on themselves. That's how I see it. Anyways, each to their own. Uh, but I just love that comment because, you know, at the end of the day, I believe that if we if we go through life, and a lot of people do this, and I'm not judging, but a lot of people do this, a lot of people really have a voice. They they they, they have a voice. They want to use it, but they let fear of rejection, of being you know frowned upon, called names, uh, you know, fear of just fear <laughs> you know they 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 allow this fear to consume them and therefore then they end up not doing it they just bite their tongue they spend their whole life biting their tongue or some people don't do it because they just think 
whatever I say isn't going to matter. It's not going to make a difference anyways. I might as well, I'll just be wasting my time. And people don't realize that one voice can start a spark that can help create change. It's important that you realize that your voice does matter. Your, your voice can be impactful. And it just takes a little faith in believing that, but it can be. You know, it is scary. I get it. I totally feel you on it. It is scary, but it is something that you can do that can create change and be impactful and powerful. in case I don't want to freaking fall and drop everything on film because that just sucks. Alright guys, we're going to do a little mission right now. Alright, this is just for you guys. We gotta get out of here! We gotta get out of here! I'll catch you guys later for another vlog! Oh.